Hello, this is Rob, uh, and welcome to my tutorial on how to draw a spaniel. Uh, this is a, this is a cute puppy, and I saw the picture and just couldn't resist, um, despite requests for some other things. Uh, this is the uh, image I'm going to be drawing. Uh, as you can see, it's rather adorable. Uh, you can see here I've made a few marks on the paper uh, with some different coloured pencils, just to give me an idea of what colours I want to use in the drawing. Uh, and I've got those here. So I'm just going to quickly show you these. Uh, I have these are all Faber Castell, by the way, for the, for the pre-drawing. Uh, so we have a black. Uh, then we have the uh, a dark brown one seven seven. Uh, a slightly lighter shade of brown at two eight three. We have again a more yellowy colour, uh, which is one eight three. Um, another nice sort of orangey brown, uh, one eight six. And then, and then, and then a, another nice yellow colour at 182. Uh, somewhere here I also have my white, uh, white fur, so there's going to be a bit of white involved, 101. Uh, you can see I've mapped my drawing out already onto the card, um, but what I want to do really is just concentrate on, on mapping it out where the colours need to be. Um, now the problem here is that if you get this drawing done too heavily, like I have done here, using trace down, uh, you have these horrible dark pencil marks and you don't want too much of that on there because sometimes it can come through onto your final piece and when you've got white you don't really want that. So uh, just very carefully pad on here. It can leave a bit of a mark on the pastel paper but hopefully it won't be too bad. Um, so I'm just trying to make that as light as possible uh, and then when I've drawn it on here uh, I have made sure I've made a note of the direction of the hair, just so as I put these bits of lines in, I'm going to know when I'm doing my final drawing, roughly the direction I want to make my pencil marks in. I'm not too concerned at the moment about the sharpness of the pencil, uh, because that's almost irrelevant. Uh, we'll put the finer details in later on in the drawing. So, as you can see, I'm just sort of highlighting these these white areas. Always drawing, mindful of drawing, in the direction that the hairs are going to go, because you never know when you want to pull some of these whites back through later on. You can see there's a bit of that pencil mark under there, which really we don't want, but later on that'll be hidden by the slightly darker layers. Now here it's not quite so white, but we're going to put some white in there anyway, just to give us an indicator. Uh, and then just over this edge here, it's quite a nice... white that comes down here and this whole area is a bit white. I don't want to make these strokes too long because as I noted it's got to be it's almost like putting in the underpainting. Okay over here we've got a sort of a white streak coming right the way across the top of the head here and as you go across these are sort of coming a bit further out. I'm not going to concentrate too much on how far these hairs come out here. Uh, as you're drawing, just turn your pencil slightly and it keeps the, uh, the marks a little sharper. And down here, there's a few of these strands. Really, I want to mark the darker areas in first, but I can do that along the edges of these marks shortly. And I've got some white in the eye here, but it's not really white, so I'm just going to put a very small coating in here. Very, very gentle strokes. I don't want to mark the paper too much and make it irreversible. Now, you might not notice this on here, but this drawing, uh, 
is in fact very blurred on the front so I've got to use a bit of artistic license based on a number of different portraits I've done of, of, of not just these animals but other ones as well to understand the way that the hair is really flowing and again I'm just remarking the outlines in and here it's a lot darker but the white will be okay Later on it'll turn a little bit more grey. There's some whiskers that come sort of, as uh, one sort of comes out here a little bit, um, ignore that there. Uh, these are just to uh, give you a market. Some people like to draw the whiskers in first and then pull them back out later. Not being a big fan of doing whiskers. I leave them until the very last possible minute. Uh, again here there's a, a bit of light. With these sort of furry paws, but I think I will probably do something with these paws later on. Uh, because there's not really enough detail in the original, despite the high resolution, to do much with it. But again this is just about really mapping in rough areas mm -hmm. a lot of these uh, dogs have these big hairy feet and there's not really an awful lot you can do to pull out the real detail in them uh, so sometimes you have to sort of give it more of an indication of the detail. Um, and certainly in this case where the drawing, uh, the original reference picture isn't brilliantly clear in certain areas. Beautifully clear face, uh, but the rest of it unfortunately is not quite in the same league. Uh, again, there's lots of hair coming over here, which we'll draw in later on. Uh, and there'll be wispy bits here, but I don't want to worry about those just for the time being. Just very gentle strokes, turning the pencil as I go, just to get a few wisps there, just so I know where they're going to be. And there will be a, a, the odd one down here as well. Uh, and then we've got the a little bit of light coming down here and across the top of the paw there. And again, we won't really see that later on. Uh, if everything goes to plan, uh, and trust me, not everything always goes to plan. See there's some hairs coming down here and here. The hair flows this way uh, normally, but there's a few whiskery bits coming down this way. Um, so again, we'll add those in once we put the basic layer in at the bottom afterwards. Uh, it appears to have a bit of a strange little mouth there, but we're going to draw that in another colour. So, black. Not my favourite colour for doing a, a, a background in it, but there are some real dark tones on here. And I want to give myself a good indication as to where they are before I start drawing in the main drawing. And this edge of this hair is quite, quite detailed. There's a bit of brown in there, so I don't want to colour that in too much there. And I'm just trying to get a good feel for where this dark patch comes in, so it comes under here. Again, this is shadow here rather than hair and depth. So just want to come up a little bit here. Mapping in some of these dark bits. Some people like to use a soft pastel and I do on occasions, not always. Um, I think that all depends on, partly on the subject. Oops. <clears throat> and partly on what you want to do with the drawing afterwards. Uh, there's some nice dark bits under here as well. And again, I'm not going to leave this as jet black because black doesn't give you the depth that you want to achieve in most of your drawings. Uh, you find that a, a sort of a purple or a yellow or you know something on those lines is far more beneficial. Where do I get yellow from? Purple or dark blue or um, 
Maybe the dark green and dark browns. Um, and there's some depth coming up here. I don't think we'll really see what's in that depth there, but again, I'm not trying to get it jet black. Just to, have to get an idea. Um, there's some depth in the nose here. And this sort of circulates around the bottom of the nose. You can put a bit of a rounded area in there. Again, these depth areas we'll go over later with some other colours just to um, try and bring them out a bit more. I don't put any details in at this stage because I don't know where they are. I like to use a little bit of artistic license. One that can go quite dark in that area there but as it comes out towards the edges I don't want to go too dark uh, and again just under this this sort of comes around here now I haven't got a brilliantly clear reference for this part um, so I'm not gonna go too dark here as you can see I'm pressing very lightly just to give an indication as to where I want this sort of this black to be and this black is just fading into the brown of the hairs there. We want to indicate a bit of that shape there. And then this, this side's quite light, so I don't want to put anything on there. We have got a slight dark undertone here, as you'd sort of expect from a nose. <laughs> Again, this is uh, not the best um, reference in the world for that part of the face, um, but it's good, it's good. Probably pencil's not really sharp enough for doing that part there yet, so. Uh, so here, again, just pulling in some of the darks in the direction the hair's going to go. Uh, you might be better off in reality Do this in a different way. In fact, I'm going to just turn here like this because one of the advantages of having your pencil held like this is that you can do these sort of nice strokes in the direction that you want to go in. And while I'm not trying to get the the overall detail here, I do want to get the right base on. And this is actually very, very dark in this area here anyway. I try not to leave it like I've done here with it all going at the same level because the hair never does. I don't mind just doing this here, it won't show afterwards. Careful here because my pencil's just not where I want it to be. And that's okay for this part. There's some very dark over and under the eye here as well. Afterwards, this will be mapped in very neat, but as you can tell. At the moment, I'm just trying to get in a, a feel, really, for where the, the dark lines are. So he's got one under the eye here. Uh, I'm careful. I can draw a very base line there. And then again, somewhere here. I should have done this in white, really, I think. Mm. There's just a very small indicator there where that light line is going to be and this hair is actually coming down in this direction here so the white's going this way but the black's going this way so again it's always important to keep your strokes going in the direction that the hair you're actually drawing 
paper I'm using is pastel matte, as you may recognise. It's got a nice sanded texture to it, which works very, very well for this kind of work. And you need to build up layers of fur and so on. Here there's a, a lot of brown, so I'm just going to put in some sort of basic black undertones. here. I'm working partly from a photograph and partly from an iPad. I don't know if you how you do yours. Uh, actually my screen on that iPad's a bit too dull. Uh, I like to do that because I like to be able to zoom right in close when I need to. Uh, there we go. This will give us a better indication. There we go. You can see that's brightened up a little bit now so it gives me some nice idea of where the subtle uh, textures are. Um, we have got some very dark under here, but I don't think it's black, so I'm not going to put some black in there. Uh, we, we also have some very dark here, um, probably not a lot of black there, but I'm just going to put a little bit in, just so I know roughly where I'm going to be going with it. This hair's coming down here, under here like this. And this again is just shadow here. And let's have a quick gander at any more dark points over here. So we've got some points in here that are quite dark. As you see, I'm not trying to draw any uh, hairs as such, just adding a bit of an indication as to where a couple of these little dark points are. And these are between the uh, the wisps of the hair. There's a few wisps here. Again. Right. So I haven't done a very good job of that one there, but still. I can hear the pitter patter of feet, which suggests that my children have. Uh, Got out of bed. I do have one of my children who's sitting quietly playing Minecraft with the volume turned down at my rather insistent request that I can record this for you guys. I think this can come a little bit further down here, a little bit darker. I don't want to go too dark here because I want to add some, some better depth in later on, but I do want to. Get the basic colours in here. Now, what have I done here? You see, I fooled myself here by drawing that whisker because this black comes all the way down here and around the little slight curve there. And again, over there, you can't see really the direction the fur is going. It's coming down here like this. There are areas where that doesn't really show so much, so we can just get away with just a little jiggly bit here. We'll draw those jiggly bits in a bit better later. Doo -doo -doo. There's some good dark up here. I really need something to leave my hand on because I'm going to do smudging it everywhere. I can see I've already done it here. That's me getting carried away with the filming rather than the art. Right, and then down here I've drawn in the eye, but I've also drawn in the shadow, so I'm just going to very carefully add some. A slight shape there, and this black which sort of comes a little bit across the eye, a little bit up there. Again, I'm not trying to draw hair at the moment, I'm just trying to draw a bit of tone. I hope I'm doing it big enough because you can't always probably work it sometimes with a reference. If the reference is not the same size that you're drawing from and you're studying your reference so hard, you draw it at the same size as your reference. And then realise your drawing is twice the size and your reference is nowhere near big enough. Or vice versa. There's a few little odd wisps. So don't be afraid to add in a couple of dark blacks because they are there. What I do sometimes is if I... Um, 
if I'm struggling to get a sharper point, I get some of my other pastel paper and I'll just, this is Rembrandt pastel paper, which uh, I'm sure some people like. I find it very good for getting a bit of a point on my pencil, but not very good for drawing that, which is a shame because, you know, all this stuff is really cheap in particular. There we are. I'm just getting that slightly finer line along there. Mm -hmm. That's got a really lovely black line coming right down there like that. And that comes down like this. Again, just be mindful, a lot of these areas here look black at first glance, and certainly they are in places. But a lot of time, there's a lot of other colours there as well. Uh, and certainly this side, there's some pinks and reds and some blues and so forth. This is going to have a bit of a couple of hints of going down like that as well. And this shadow here, as you can see, oops, almost drawing its hair there. Sometimes I do this sort of circular motion, uh, which can be useful. And I think here, then a bit more there. And then have a, a slight tuff so it comes in and then a little bit out there. Right. I guess we can draw in a bit of a, a bit of a round of the eyeball there. In fact the eyeball does come up just at the other side here. Really, really dark. The highlight is along there, so I don't want to colour too much of the dark in at this point and there should be some white there um, some of it you can pull back later on some of it you curse yourself for for the next couple of weeks because you knew you shouldn't have done what you did okay so i've just mapped in a few of the darker the, the real darker areas uh, and now i'm going to do the same thing with my darker brown which is <clears throat> So the darker brown I'm going to use is the 177, again Faber-Castell. Um, so we'll start over here. Uh, and again, I want to do just an indication. Um, the thing with hair is that a lot of the time you can't, there's, there's no way you can draw thousands and thousands and millions of tiny little individual hairs. It just doesn't, just doesn't compute. So you need to give an indication of it. And one of the best ways of doing the indication is to flick your pencil in those directions. Being mindful, of course, as you're going, that you need to keep drawing in the direction that you need to go in, obviously. Uh, it's very easy to keep going like this, like this, like this, like this, all the way, and then sort of realise the pair should have changed quite a while ago. Uh, and trust me, when you do that, it can be very frustrating. So here, this is coming down here. In fact, I've missed, I'm not sure what line I was following there. I, I think I followed the wrong line in actual fact, but that's okay. This is too busy waffling. Not enough drawing. One of the nice things about this kind of dog is you can, to some degree, get away with it. Not quite sure how I made the mistake in the first place, but you can see I'm not trying to get any real definition of hair at the moment. It is literally just mapping in the undertones. And what I'll do in a second to see is I'll start to blend some of this in. Uh, I use a colour shifter. Some people like to use, uh, well, I do as well sometimes, the, the um, paper pencil pushes these things. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't quite figured out how to clean these properly. Uh, someone suggested sandpaper, and it's not something I have in stock. So it's one of those things that will, will, will wait until the day I do. So I'm just... This is very dark again. So I'm not trying to 
pull too much of it along here. But it's good for these sort of areas here, so we know that this area here has a nice little dark streaks in. And they're coming up and up like this. And then they start to creep over here. I like to mark a few in. Um, the hairs are a fair length, but they're not massively long. Worry about the other one going in a slightly different direction because that's actually quite natural. Okay, so I'm giving an indication here of hair, and this is just the base layer. And in a, just a few minutes' time, you won't even see any of this, I wouldn't think. So this is going to come around. And just down here, it's not quite so dark actually. And then it comes into this lovely dark area here. You okay, Robbie? Yeah. Wanna say hello to everybody? Robbie does his own Minecraft videos on YouTube. So you wouldn't think he'd be shy, but he is. Mapping in the basic colours here with some dark browns because these will all be built on top of later. No. So we've got to be a little bit careful, those hairs going different directions here, but actually they're almost in the same direction, and that's where. This can get tricky, and these hairs come out about to here. Um, so we don't want to go too hard, we want them to show up later on. And you can see I'm pulling my pencil, trying to twist and turn it. I know there's a, a lovely guy called Colin Bradley, I'm actually a subscriber to his uh, his website, great website. Far more tutorials than I have on here. Or with having only just started doing them. Um, but he also will tell you the same thing, twist your pencil as you as you turn, as you draw. Likewise, one of the reasons for going this way is your, your tapered edges. You know. These are rough, but they're giving you an, an idea here of the direction we want to go in. And again, we know that there's this nice sort of dark patch along the eyes here. So we're going to come down here. Uh, I'm not, as I said before, I'm not too worried about getting the exact areas here because this all blends into each other afterwards. But you've got to remember the flow of the hair is going in the same direction, so you've got to get it fairly accurately. And these are all very small, thin hairs. So the finer your, finer your point, the better. And these are actually coming around this way here. A little bit more. Okay. I can go right to the edges here. A little bit. But I want to add some slightly different colour, perhaps a bit of blue along here later. Uh, it just helps bring that colour out a little bit. Now you can see here, I've gone a little bit too uniform. Uh, I don't really want to be like that, because hair does not all fall in one go, unless you have a basin cut, like I used to have when my mum looked after me when I was younger. Uh, I involved a lot of bullying. So, basin cuts, don't see many puppies with them. I'm just trying to avoid it. Again, these 
these are coming up. I need to be a little bit careful here. If I start singing, I have to apologise. I'm either singing or sticking my tongue out. I have no idea why I stick my tongue out. I've always done it when I'm drawing. Uh, much to the amusement of everybody watching me. Except me when I realise. Now the hairs here, you've got two different sorts. So you've got hair coming up here and you've got hair coming this way. Uh, and it's always a bit of a, a funny one to draw in. But those little white wisps we've got there help to bring it back later on. And we want to start putting these back in. So don't be afraid to follow the real direction the hair is going in. Now, if we just look at this edge here, the hair comes around a bit like this, and then carries on coming down here. Okay, I'm not trying to get any real hard detail in here. I'm just putting in a base foundation. All these little messy little marks later on become quite an important part because they add to the layers of your drawing. These are the depth, the depth marks. Which your lighter marks help helps show them up a lot clearer. Always gonna have a few streaks in there like that. So it doesn't hurt to put a few extra parts in. You can see that's coming. I don't know if you can see the reference, but if you can't, there's a few little bits like that coming around. And there always will be, even you know, over here where I've got some white edges, there's a few extra dark little streaks. And again, over here, this is coming up. So up here, it's a lot of orange, a lot of orange coloration. So I'm not gonna put too much dark in here uh, until I get to these parts of the ears, because this is where, you know, as I mentioned before, there's some real dark and there is here as well. somebody asked me was how do you make the colours shine so if I keep watching hopefully we'll be able to pull out some of this uh, shine that you can see on this lovely little puppy that you will see on this lovely little puppy when I finished him could be a hair and you can't tell by a dog's fur to my knowledge is what sex it is down here, I put that black there, didn't I? But it's actually got a lot of brown down here for the direction of the fur. I can hear children shouting and screaming upstairs, so shortly I am going to have to go and deal with those. So if my lovely wife comes home and hears them playing up, I don't know who will be in more trouble. Do I, Robbie? No. No, he says. Oh dear. My pencil is a little bit blunt there now. So I'm using a, a helix sharpener. Preferably without tipping it all over my drawing. That was almost a bit careless of me. Uh, five or six turns. <laughs> if you do it in the right direction. Brings your point back a little better. Ooh. Maybe seven or eight in this case. Now, whether this is something to do with the sharpening or not, but it never brings me the perfect point. So again, this is when I go back to my scribbling sheet. 
and I just twist the pencil and rub it off a little bit and that gives me this much finer point which hopefully you can see there actually there you go uh, right I want to see all of my server videos all in one, then I've just created a playlist. My lovely boy is trying to promote his YouTube channel. You can see here with that sharper thing, I can really pull in some dark hairs and really we do that towards the end of the drawing I do anyway. I know different people have slightly different ways of doing it. <clears throat> It's important to try and keep track of where you are in your drawing as well. So we know that's going to come down here. Then we have some darks going down here. And then another. Not too much dark here. Also, if you just if you struggle to find it, then it has then my YouTube channel has Nine videos and seven subscribers at the moment. Nine videos and seven subscribers Robbie has. He's actually got more than I have because I've only just started. Uh, let's hope he can do something with it. He absolutely loves his Minecraft and loves teaching people about it. In fact, it's all he talks about. As you may have noticed with him whittling on in the background there. <clears throat> Again, as I said before, I'm not trying to get in too much of the graphic detail here. I'm just trying to get in where some of these basic shapes are. All these nice darker areas. So it's not always easy to remember where you're drawing. Mm -hmm. So I've got some dark here as well. Essentially, I've drawn some of these lines in to give me a better indication as to where, where my darks are. In theory, I can blend all these little lines here. Remember I mentioned earlier on about these darknesses down here as well. And these <laughs> and there's some quite quite a bit of depth down here. This all comes in this sort of general direction. I can be a little bit heavier here because it's almost sort of blurred. So I'm not going to try and put the same level of details in uh, that I put in some of the other places. So really just indicating there the direction the hair's going in. And there's a few sort of wispy bits there. Uh, and perhaps let's have a look. Yeah, I think we can just put a a few touches there like this do, do, do. and this lovely area here is full of little light hairs which we'll have to again put the impression on and I keep talking about impressions because a lot of what you're doing when you're drawing dog hair is about the impressions that it makes see this area here I think it should be a lot bigger so that bit's fine we'll be need some Darker streaks in here like this. <laughs> you can see, well, I've got some areas here. I'm actually going to shade this in. A little bit more. Let's 
later on. I'll be going around a lot more of this, adding in some much finer um, shading. But as I said before, at the moment, I'm really just mapping in some of the darker spots uh, and the odd little hair. Um, this is a bit like drawing the outline uh, of your main drawing. A lot of people will plan out what they're doing first. I like to see how the drawing goes, um, but I'm very conscious here that because there's no detail in these pores on the uh, reference photograph, at least not enough to make it look probably like it ought to, um, I will probably need to use a little discretionary backgrounding. I'm not sure what that's going to look like. Yep. You can see this very rough mark again. Just gives that sort of hair impression. What have I done here? With a big, big patch. Which probably shouldn't be there in quite such a dramatic way. But it's nevertheless there. <laughs> okay, let's get some basic shades over here. <clears throat> There's a bit of green and yellow in there. Um, and certainly these, the hairs on this paw, from the best as I can tell, are gonna come up a bit like this. Maybe, and then we've got a slight bit there in the paw. I'm thinking comes down here and some of these hairs come around like this and then they're flowing in this sort of direction. Okay, so you can see what we've done here hopefully. Put in the basics, added the direction that we know the hairs are going to go in. I've added a few little streaks, and, and really these streaks aren't to um, show on the final drawing as such. They're more to tell me later on which direction I want the hairs to go in. My son is still laughing. You can see this pulling away. And really I'm tapering this. Um, oops. Again, this is what I said before about the dangers of getting used to going in one direction only to realize actually oh, the fur changes direction. Remember I said about coming down here. That's okay, because that means we leave some extra layers there for later. And this is a little bit uneven down here. Um, and always will be. Mm -hmm. Having some brown onto the black that I put in earlier. Uh, I'm just going to do the same. There's a little bit of dark hair that's going on here. Not a lot, but if it's there, you have to draw it. One of the mistakes a lot of people make when they're doing these things is they they draw what they think is there or what their, their head sort of tells them is there but not actually what is there uh, and then they can't understand afterwards why things don't look like they should 
We have all done it. I know I do. Every day. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of shade under there. This will all become a bit of a shadow later. Over here, not too much because this is quite a light load of browns here, but it is there, so we have to put it in. One of the things to, as I said, intimating at a few moments ago, is that a lot of the time. Um, we draw really evenly. And dogs and cats do have haircuts. I'm not gonna say they don't. I've seen people give their dogs and cats haircuts. Um, but if there'll be hairs, are not all that even in their length. Um, so try and keep your brush strokes a little varied um, as you're coming. And the odd hair goes in a slightly different direction. Again, don't be afraid to experiment and put those other hairs in. Talk about drawing what's there and then proceed to use a bit of artistic license. So everything's open to interpretation in some way. Isn't it? Oh. Now here, I haven't even started yet, but it's where you start to put these. All these little bits in here. The drawing starts to have an impact. This is just a base coat, and having a bit of random hair direction isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just not always a good thing. This layer here is fairly forgiving because it's not the, the one down here, which we're going to be drawing now. So we've got a little bit of hair. This is where you have to take a, a good look at what you're doing. to make sure that your shading goes in the right place. Oh, that sounds like another one of my sons. This is the old one. Popping in and saying hello, hello Will. Hi. Oh. Be real careful here because this hair is very fine. And if you don't get this bit right, remember I said about the white later can be pulled out a little bit, so don't worry too much about that unfortunately this hair here all sort of goes in the same direction. Again, I really I should be sharpening my pencil again now. If you can't get those nice little thin lines in this early stage, it's not too important. As you'll see in a second, I'm going to take away all these hairy locks. Uh, and start to blend it a little bit, just to partly push the pasta into the paper a bit more. Help me add further layers later on, at least that's what the theory I work with. Oh dear, I don't seem to be getting much joy out of this pencil for sharpening, but I'm gonna give it another go. I'm ready to order a new sharpener soon. Oh, there we go. It's not perfect, but again, just for what I'm doing here, at this point, it's good. Mm -hmm. I've got the 
a little bit. Don't be afraid to, you know, this hair is white, but in actual fact, there's a few stray hairs. Um, and while these aren't intended to be the stray hairs, they just help to add that bit of extra depth under the white. As it joins, when we pull it back afterwards, it'll look really effective. Again here, I'll put a light blue tinge over there afterwards. It's quite nice around the edges here. Do, do, do. I hope you can hear me clearly enough. Again, not something I'm used to doing, so uh, tutorials are a learning process. I think in much the same way that drawing is. <laughs> I'm sure there's people on here who are part of the group and part of YouTube that may be watching these and think, oh my God, what is he doing? What is he waffling on about? What's he do with his pencils? And that's okay. A lot of us develop our own techniques and we borrow from other people and we argue about who's self-taught and who's learned from this and that and the other. You know what, it doesn't matter. Because ultimately your customers, who are the ones that matter, what they care about is getting a lovely image. They don't care necessarily where you learn to create that image or how you learn to create that image. They care about, can you do the same for them? And that I will. Mm -hmm. Doesn't sound as convinced as me, but right there we go. Uh, maybe a few more wisps here, a little bit there. Not worried about getting too much in here because the, a lot of this fur is white. With some basic brown undertones. Okay. So we have here for the basics two tones so far, three tones so far, a little bit of white, although that's not really the tone yet. We have the black for the depth, and we have the browns for the uh, slightly darker brown areas. Uh, the next thing we want to do is map in with a slightly lighter brown, um, but we don't want to go too mad here. Um, because we just need to know, again, where those shadows are going. Some quite interesting highlights down here. Might give you a clue as to why I use this colour paper. The colour of the paper you work on, I think, is very important because it gives you almost a mid-tone in itself. And again, I'm not trying to focus too much on individual strands here. I'm just putting in the basic layers. Drawing, as I've said before, in the general direction of the hair and the way it goes. On the 
Let's disappear in that. You can see what I'm doing here is blending darker, always in the direction of the fur. And again, this is rough. how I want it to be. Because we're just indicating direction. Robbie Roo, it's going to be time for your bed any second, I think. Hopefully you have an idea. Just adding in bits of tone. Yeah. You always need tone. Yeah. And you always need to wait until the end if you want to just see what it should actually look like. Actually, that's very true. Wise words. A drawing is never finished until it's finished, and there's been many a time when I've got to a certain point in my drawing where I've been, oh my god, what have I done this? What have I done? What have I done? Yeah. But actually, I keep going with the plan. And then at the end, well, in the end, it just looks like it should. Yeah, for a realistic. Yeah, that's right. Well done, Robbie. I see you've been listening to me. So it might not look like it now, but it will look like it in the end. Yeah. Persevere. Let's have a little helper. Yeah, persevere. And your drawing will take its form. Not always straight away. And not always in the way you expect it to, but it does work. What does that show to you about, Will? Jordan on his games. <laughs> Kids in their games. There's a few brands down here, in actual fact. Various different forms, and the hair is sort of down here. I'm going to put these lines in. It will blur hopefully afterwards. Oh. Let me rephrase that. It will blur afterwards, one way or other. See, every time I'm doing this, I'll turn in the pencil and I'm always keeping going in the direction of the fair. And I'm going to do the same a little bit down here as well. And certainly down here, this bit. I'm not entirely sure what this, but it looks like a grumpy lip which I will be drawing in a lot more detail later. There's some nice white bits down there we need to add in towards the end. Um, I might leave those feet out actually. I'm not sure quite how I'll do that yet. Um, and that's the beauty sometimes about 
working freely the way I do is you can decide as you go along. It doesn't always work. But I've yet to find a piece that I can't salvage in some way, having messed with it in that way. And you can see. Shade going on this area of the ear down here. This is what I said earlier on, I've gone a little bit too far. And I said the nice thing is you can salvage it usually. And I will. Because this is only the underdrawing. Interesting thing here is there's lots of different hair. So we don't want to go too mad. It's going across like that. But at the same time, you've got all these hairs coming in. And again, well, I don't want to put the final detail in there. I do want to add some of the color that's going to be sitting here afterwards. Are going to go afterwards as well. Mm -hmm. and some of this really does go into this white up here. I'm going back over bits I've done already now, adding in some of the secondary tones, which I didn't actually want to do on this part of the video. So I'm going to stop that for a second and just keep trying to. Bring this in here. Add some of these. Just want to rough up the uh, edges here. Do, do, do. I don't normally shade like that, but again, I'm adding some base toning. In a second, what I'm going to do is get my other magic device out and just pull some of this colour around then. And you'll see how that blends in shortly. I mean, you get an idea now. We've got the illusion here of lots of hair. Well, in fact, I've not drawn any. And the final piece. This part here probably needs to be a bit rounder. I'll show you a technique later where you can use it to check against your drawing um, to see your progress. Now, oddly enough, there's a few little spots on the nose here that have this very slight brown tint. So while I'm not going to colour the nose in brown, I am going to add a few tints of brown here and there. Um, and that will show up later on in the drawing. And again, there's some real good colouration here. Not much later on. So this at the end, these um, 
little hairs will be barely visible. I'm probably starting here to add in uh, more detail than I really want to. Sometimes adding in those extra bits just makes you realise where you're missing some of your your browns or whatever colour it is you happen to be using. You see the shape's wrong here, it's got to come out a little bit further. And it comes down there sort of there. An arch there. Again the beauty about dogs is that depending on whose dog it is, um and how you gotta get the markings in the right place, obviously. But the hairs don't have to be exact. Because hairs lie in all different directions. Okay. We've got a real good one to do. There's quite a lot of greys down here in, in reality. Um, but I'm gonna add those in. Later on in the drawing, and some slightly darker black there. You've got an idea now of what we're hoping to achieve here. I might just um, add some basic shade here. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with this bottom area in particular. But it'll be something, uh, and we'll need to make sure it's right. So, <laughs> okay. So, we have the basic tone here. We need to do the same thing. Damn it! Lost my picture. My white is still fairly sharp here. For a little while at least. Little wispy bits. They'll probably remain there right through to the end. And again, they're not what? actual hairs. This is not true. They're more an impression of the hairs. The video is not too long. <laughs> it's always got to be this is a video in always? the direction. Too long, it's not even 20 minutes. So we're getting them muddy, and this is always a danger. So press lightly. Because in a second, I'm going to show you how to make it muddy on purpose. So this here is sort of guesswork because I can't see really where these hairs are going on this drawing. But we know the centre of the nose is going to go up and in that direction. And then we know from the hairs we can see that they're going to come over here. And then we'll start blending over here like this. Again, don't forget what we're doing here is just an underdrawing. So it's giving the impression, the basic tones for the bottom, which a lot of people have asked about, how do we, how do we choose the undertones? I could argue, sometimes it's trial and error. There's no white here, but there's a few nice little highlights, which I put these bits of white in here now, over here, it'll work better for the highlights later. 
I'm not going to put those highlights there yet. Oh dear. Looks like it's going to be my time to sign off. There might be some shouting and bawling in a second, but I always realise I'm back drawing again. But we'll feel try and get this very quickly finished off, so I'll go and say hello to her. Robbie, hmm? it's time for bed. Way past bedtime. Just gonna knock these bits of white in over here. Work down here. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to punish myself too much if this doesn't end up looking exactly right. When you haven't got a brilliantly clear reference photo, you can only do the best you can. And hopefully, the the overall look will have me forgiven. A slight edge there. Now some of you might be thinking, oh yeah, we well, want to know how to how to not do what you're doing there, but you're and you're, and you're actually making it muddy. Well, you're right. I am. I am. But my reasons for that will become a little bit apparent later on. I hope. If they don't, I'll be eating my words, my darling. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's just bring some more detailing. Down here, there's a few quite nice streaks down here. And I don't know why I'm putting the white there, there's not really any uh, highlighting down there. But there's a bit down here. Don't worry too much at this stage about what's what you think you can see. And that's because it's not done right now. No, that's right, it's not done right no, now. No one yet done. That's right. Do -do -do. All right, well, my little boy. As you may have gathered, is hovering around me because he wants to kiss goodnight. So, so that's not why. Oh, no. Well, I stand corrected. Thanks, Roy. Oh, I'm actually doing is watching you draw. Ah, he's just watching me draw. I was. I stand corrected. Even though I'm drawing mid tones here. You can see I'm only little bits in, and that will become apparent when I finish the underdrawing. There's a bit more light over here. Give it a bit of Is there? Yeah. I'm sure there is. And that colour is more like... There we go. You can see just by... It's more like these two together. Is it? Yeah. 
blue. Well, this boy's been watching me too much. Seems to be learning how to do it. Which is a good thing, anyway. Mm -hmm. Show where it is. <laughs> it's alright, we don't need to. Huh? Just like. He doesn't need to, but he's going to. Down here. Start yelping. Okay, I think for this part of the tutorial we're done. I hope you found it useful. Uh, like I said, just giving you the basic undertones there for the under part of the drawing. The next stage I'll show you how I'll start to blend that before adding a lot more detail. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I've enjoyed doing it. Uh, it's a good excuse to, to get me drawing and enjoy it myself. So I'll speak to you soon.